we're halfway through October, so I thought I would give a little bit of an update of how my Victober is going. So I've read a bit of everything, actually. I'm really pleased about how the first half has gone. So I have read two poetry collections. So that was really different from what I usually read. I read the Goblin Market and Other Poems by Christina Rossetti. I actually really enjoyed her voice and her... Um, I'm losing all my words. Uh, anyway, the way that she wrote the poems, like the way she used rhymes and uh, like the how long the lines were. Yeah, I totally forgot. You can, you can almost not tell that I have a degree, <laughs> two degrees in English. Uh, anyway, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the Goblin Market. This is the first and main poem of the collection. It's quite long and it was so vivid in the description. Like it starts with quite a luscious series of description of food. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. Not entirely sure what it was about, but enjoyed it anyway. I also really like all the seasonal, seasonal poems. I always like to read something that's just like exuberantly about, you know, spring, you know, the freshness of it and the new starts and also about the colors and darkness of autumn and the green grass and sparkling sun of summer, you know, I think that's just really nice to it kind of puts you in that mood and you can picture it, it's really nice. And I thought I would highlight the No Thank You John, which I thought was the ultimate poem to a nice guy that's being friend zone. I thought that was hilarious actually. I also read the poems by Charlotte Bronte. I did not find uh, Bronte's poetry as accessible as Rossetti, so I had to take a lot more attention and there was loads of words I didn't understand so I had to google a lot of stuff and it was quite rewarding in that way because I feel like I learned so much but also sometimes I was like I have no idea what's going on I didn't understand like the mentions to other writers or yeah so it was it was a, a bit more obscure in that way that said I really really enjoyed um the teacher's monologue I feel like there was some bits about anxiety that were really vivid and real as someone who suffers from anxiety, I could definitely relate. I also really thought the poems to uh, Anne and Emily were really, really beautiful. It was about their death and it was really poignant. And there was another one, a poem called Parting that I thought was brilliant. I read it to my husband. It was really, really beautiful. I also read two short stories. I'm also planning on reading a third one. Um, what is it called? The Old Nurse Story? By Elizabeth Gaskell, but I think I'll read that when I'm back from Iceland and you know like maybe on Chris on Christmas Day on uh, Halloween day I think it'll be a bit spooky. So the two stories that I read were Christmas Storms and Sunshine by Elizabeth Gaskell and The Lifted Veil by George Eliot. So the first one Christmas Storms and Sunshine it was quite a short story about basically uh, two women and slash couple uh, that are sit on a different political side with their neighbors and how they basically come together for Christmas. And I thought that some of the bits about Tories and liberals was so real and clearly hasn't evolved. And I thought like I could have some of the stuff I could have read and it was literally from today. So I thought that was really funny. And I just thought it was beautiful the way they put some stuff to get like aside to enjoy Christmas together. Anyway, there wasn't much more to that. <laughs> Then the Lifted Veil was a really bizarre story, but I enjoyed the thoughts behind it and a bit of like the eerie creepiness of it. So the main character is kind of kept being like, oh, I keep seeing these visions of things that are gonna happen. And I know I'm gonna marry this woman. And he keeps like seeing things. And there's something really spooky that happens at the end as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it was about, like what this story was trying to say, but I in, I was entertained while I was reading it, you know? I've also read Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, I really should have renamed Victor Gaskell-Tober, I think, because I'm literally reading so much of Elizabeth Gaskell right now. Uh, but yeah, I read Cranford. It felt super weird. Like almost sometimes nonsensical in the way that I was just like, okay, I'm going with it, you know? I think that's what you have to do when you're reading that book because there's no plot, but it was really funny. Like the first chapter, I was literally laughing out loud, which doesn't happen that often. But there's a moment where she says, 
she knew that we knew that she knew and I was just like they don't know that we know they know we know <laughs> so I think that was really funny um, and yeah I just enjoyed the voice it was so so different from North and South and Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell but I still really enjoyed the ride and on that note I'm in the middle literally exactly I think I'm buddy reading this with Nikki from Red Dot Reads and actually it's kind of um, pulling me along because at first I was like oh I'll get to it if I get to it and then she was like oh I've read the first 10 chapters and I was like oh, okay I'll catch up <laughs> so yeah so I'm, I, I'm almost I'm at 29 so I'm almost at the 30th chapter so there's 60 chapters so I'm almost halfway there and I'm really enjoying it actually I have no idea where this is going and I feel like as I keep thinking, talking with Nikki and she's seen the series so I think she knows where this is going but I'm really enjoying going in blind I'm trying to see where it goes you know with like who likes who and like the scandals and like things are gonna happen but it's yeah it's really uh, in enjoyable up to now and I will definitely do a review at, at the end of the month and finally the last two books I've, I've only just started them is Villette by Charlotte Bronte and Great Expectation by Charlotte Dickens so I've started both of those I don't have as many thoughts yet because I've only just started them I feel like once I'm done this one I feel like I don't want to bring this huge book to Iceland with me I'm flying there in a few days and so this may have to take a back seat till I come back I'm listening to the audiobook for Villette so maybe I'll try to finish that off when I'm in Iceland We'll see, we'll see how it goes because I don't want to just, you know, not read anything Victorian when I'm in Iceland. So I'll I'll see about how it goes with all of it. And I really want to finish Great Expectations because mostly, was it like one of the only books? Yeah, I wanted to read all the Brontes this year, but also Great Expectations by Charles Dickens was one of my classics on my classics TBR for the year. So I feel like I really need to get to it. So those are the main, those are the three novels I'm trying to finish and they're huge, all of them. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing my best, but I have, yeah, I have two, two and a half weeks left. So I will do my best. the final update of my Victober and I'm also back from Iceland <laughs> um, I didn't accomplish as much as I wanted to in the second half of the month because I was in Iceland for most of that half of the month which was extraordinary actually I'll insert a couple of clips here but I'll probably be doing like a separate video about my time in Iceland it was mostly work but also some travel so that was really good but really busy I actually didn't read a single page of any book <laughs> during my time in Iceland uh, I was just so busy so tired as well I get, would just get back to a hotel just crash so didn't read anything despite my best hopes but I'm very pleased with the fact that in October I finished Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell and this is a 650 page book. It was not on my classics TBR for the year. So I feel like this swallowed up a lot of the um, time of reading for my Victober. And in the end, it ended up being the only novel that I finished. Also, I read Cranford, but that was quite short. So I want to continue reading Elizabeth Gaskell 100%. I read this as a buddy read with Nikki from Red Dot Reads. And that was really good actually. We usually did like sections of like 10 chapters and we'd give us notes and yeah, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed that. And it was really good to talk to someone about this because I feel like there's so much into this. And obviously, as many people know, this was Elizabeth Gaskell's last novel. She passed before she was able to finish it actually. So the end of the book isn't really finished. Uh, in my version, I don't know if it's in all versions, but anyway, the editor basically wrote about the fact that where it was probably going, including some notes by Elizabeth Gaskell about where the, how the novel was going to end. So that was really cool to see that, but it does feel like this unfinished, but I still loved it regardless. I think it's a great coming of age story 
it does have a lot of disability representation or not not always for the positive but i feel like it was good to see that representation and not just like oh this person is isn't very strong like it was kind of a bit more explicit in that way and i love to see the relationship of a daughter and father even though that's not quite what this focus is on but i thought that was really pretty uh pretty it was good <laughs> and just generally i really enjoyed molly as a character i'm really rooted for her felt for her along the way so yeah very good one i still prefer north and south obviously i don't think this was ever gonna top it but a really really good read and i'm very pleased with it i didn't actually get very far in great expectations by charles dickens it was one of my books to read this year and <laughs> Well, I went for Elizabeth Gaskell instead, which I feel is very in keeping with my kind of vibe, but I still want to read this. Maybe in December, I'm doing non-fiction November right now, but maybe in December I'll go back. I only read three or four chapters, and that was like just before I went to Iceland, and then I was in Iceland, didn't bring this, obviously. <laughs> uh, and then when I came back like the last few days of October, I didn't actually read anything that was Victorian. Actually, I read a completely different contemporary novel because I was a bit Victorian that a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, I, I will go back to this probably. Um, maybe in December I can read one Bronte novel and finish, finish. read Great Expectations. And yes, I didn't actually manage to finish any of the Bronte novels I have started. So I'm about halfway to Villette, though to be fair, and I'm enjoying it up to now, so that was good. Actually, I started reading really funny. I started reading a book for uh, Nonfiction November and it keeps referring back to Villette, which I think is really funny, so I need to go back to it. And obviously I have Tenants of Wildfell Hall still going. Uh, in September, I made the choice to start it from scratch again. I've been listening to the audiobook and I feel like I've not caught some of the details and I was like, mm, I want to go back. So I thought I'd do that in October and I did not. Yeah, anyway. So my classic TBR for 2022 has not really advanced actually <laughs> uh, to this October, which is literally what I was waiting for to try to cram as much as I could. But here we are. One thing I did finish, uh, half of it I guess, I finished the first tome, first volume of The Count Monte Cristo. And on that note, I actually watched the movie, like one of the adaptations anyway, with my husband, he'd never seen it. So we watched it together and for basically for the first half of the movie, actually no, the movie, that's what I thought. Okay, I thought that Edmund in The Count Monte Cristo goes off to prison and in the movie, it's literally like half the movie, but it's much less than half of even this book. Um, so that was really interesting, but I kept telling my oh, that's not how it is in the book. Oh, that's how it is in the book. <laughs> this character doesn't exist. Um, so that was really fun. And then obviously we got to the part later on where I'm currently reading, which is part two. And I'm excited to see where that goes, but I'm still working on that. And another thing I watched is actually North and South. Because I finished uh, Wives and Daughters just before heading off to Iceland, like literally on the train to the airport. I didn't watch adaptations yet. Maybe I'll watch it this month. Um, so I didn't have time to watch it, but it's my plan. But instead I did watch North and South with Richard Armitage earlier in the month. I watched it with my husband. We like, there was a really rainy weekend earlier in the month in October and we just sat down by the fire um, and watched it. That was really good and I really like it. So it's just fun to, to revisit as well. So I feel like I've accomplished most of the challenges. I'm really pleased with that. I read some poetry, I read some short stories. I read a really large novel. <laughs> um, I read some shorter work, obviously read with disability, the coming of age and have watched adaptations. So yeah, generally I thought it was a good month. Unfortunately, it didn't progress my classic CPR as much as I wanted. But I'm really happy with what I did read and what I did discover throughout the month. Like it's not really me to read short stories or poetry. So I thought that was really cool. I think my highlight was the poetry of Christina Bossetti and obviously uh, Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. 
Let me know how your Victober went. I'd be very excited to hear about any recommendation, any work that you read that you were like, oh my God, that was so good. Big recommend. I would love to hear that. As always, thank you so much for watching and hey, see you. Bye.